rest. What do you think about rest? Is it a good thing or is it a necessary evil? Does our rest simply benefit us or is it possible that our rest can also benefit others? What do you think? It seems that Jesus is trying to teach his disciples how to renew their spirits and repair their bodies. But others with spirits in need continue to reach out for them. What a challenge that is for the disciples to rest. What a challenge it is for us to rest. In one respect, we need to take a break from actively helping others. But on the other hand, we're called to serve. But we can't do both at the same time, can we? Because if we could, it would eliminate a lot of our anxiety and feeling of, well, if I don't do it, then... Or... I have to do it because acting as if there wasn't a God. The life of a Christian can be tiring as we often spend our time caring for others. Caring for them in one way or the other. I stopped by the church yesterday and found quite a few of our members here caring for others during our Code Orange event. I just want to say thank you so much to all of you who participated with that event in one way or the other. I saw that you gave out snacks and water and reading materials and puzzle activities. It was wonderful. Thank you. You are the modern-day disciples of Jesus. However, after the work is done, there should be rest, says Jesus. But if it's not rest in a truly deserted place, they will find you. And as disciples, we're born to serve. We're born to care. We're born to go the extra mile for someone or some cause, whether we're tired or not. I know an 80-year-old doctor who is still serving her patients 12 hours a day, five days a week. Now, that's right. I said 80, eight, zero. This woman is running circles around me. She does it because she feels that no one else will care for them in the way that she does. Who will listen to their concerns of everyday life? Who will ask questions about their children and their parents and other family members? And you know what? I have to agree that when she retires, her patients won't get that care. Because she spends quite a bit of time with her patients, some of which have been with her for over 40 years. They're a community. They're a family. But when we include God into the equation, we find that there will be many shepherds waiting to be assigned to her patients. We have only to include God. Her patients are like sheep who are accustomed to their shepherd's voice, who has been guiding and supporting them for many, many years. You know, I feel for her such love and devotion. We have love and devotion in our work as well. But our Lord says, understand what he says, come away to a deserted place all by yourself and rest a while. Why? For God continues to watch over his flock even while we're resting. So how are you doing with that resting thing? Are any of you getting away 
to a deserted place or at least a quiet place every now and again? I haven't been keeping track, but weren't we supposed to be sending pictures back of ourselves with uh, traveling Thomas, or I think we call him Flat Thomas? Not a very nice name, but traveling Thomas while we spend time away resting, resting. No worries if you haven't had an opportunity to do that because summer is not over yet and there's still plenty of places to go and take Flat Thomas. And since he doesn't talk, you can count that as getting away all by yourself. But wait, Lord, not everyone can get away to a deserted place because we live in a country with so much noise and with jobs with so little time off, not to mention the high cost of travel, where can we go? On August 4th, 2005, the Washington Post came out with, or at least they made popular, the term staycation. It referred to a trend of going on vacation right in your own home or vacationing without traveling. It was a response to the soaring gas prices and the high demands of jobs needing its employees to stay close at home and be available. As an unexpected benefit of this staycation concept, the trend opened up doors to creativity and finding a means of getting away from the crowd, finding that deserted space a place to repair our mind, body, and souls. Those staycations are not as popular as they were 20 years ago. The idea and practices which came out of it are still widely practiced today. Do you recall any? I think if you think about it, I bet you can. How about spa day? Or visiting a local park? especially the ones that are off the beaten path. Path. Do your lips ever get stuck when you're trying to talk? That's a constant problem I have up here. Maybe I'll use some chapstick or something. <laughs> I recall one hot summer day needing to get away from the crowds and the noise and so I hopped into my car and drove to a nearby state park called Susquehannock. I always get that wrong. I want to say Susquehanna, but there's a Susquehannock Park. Has anybody in here been there? We have one person back there who's been there. Talk about getting away from everything. This park is in the sticks. Anyway, once you get there, you get to the entrance, and there's a parking lot and a trail which leads down a hill to a lookout point. It's a landing with a huge cliff that overlooks the Susquehanna River. What a beautiful sight that was. With the giant trees perched along the hillside, so close, it felt like you could just reach out and touch one of those majestic eagles perched high on its branches, staring out for its next meal in the waters hundreds of feet below. A beautifully deserted place within an occupied area. I say occupied because there was another person present when I arrived quietly gazing out over the cliff. And as we both stood silently gazing out at that magnificent water below, the Spirit of God quietly put his resting shepherds to work. In no time at all, our unabiding spirits were compelled to talk about the goodness of God's presence in that beautiful place. Complete strangers in every way imaginable. We became consumed in our conversation and interest in one another. So much so that we hadn't noticed a young woman of about 20 years of age had come to the cliff apparently contemplating suicide. 
But she overheard the joy of our conversation and was healed and decided not to go through with the attempt. Instead, she walked over to us with tears in her eyes, thanking us for being there and providing her with the hope she so desperately needed. A staycation that provided healing for both the shepherds and the sheep. So come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while, says Jesus. Because through your rest comes healing for others. One more story about rest and I'll end. You'll see me smile when I talk about this. I always smile when I talk about this. Many of you have heard me speak often of my grand pig, Wilbur, who is as friendly as he can be. He, too, is a sort of shepherd and practices taking periods of rest. Probably too many, but... For next to his pig pen is a house of chickens who he watches over daily. Chickens who, oddly enough, haven't figured out that they make for good eating and have found a way to slip through the narrow bars of Wilbur's pig pen and visit him as he sleeps. Perhaps he, too, is used by the Holy Spirit to shepherd others. After all, his pig pen is a quiet, deserted place, But as we've learned through our previous story, that to truly be a shepherd, you must care for others even during your assumed periods of rest. So Wilbur, not to be outdone by his ever-loving grandfather, allows this controversial event of chickens coming into his hut. They come in and place eggs under Wilbur while he is sleeping. Ever so gently, they take their eggs from the chicken coop, bring them into Wilbur's hut, and place them under Wilbur for him to warm while he is sleeping. So rest, beloved. But look under your bellies. And make sure no one has put any eggs there for you to keep warm. But if you do find them, please give them to me. We need them in the cafe. Amen. (laughs) 